Greetings everyone and welcome to the third episode of my Flutter web tutorial series. Today we will be looking at how to program this responsive top navigation bar for our Flutter web project. It's a rather simple design showing you guys the basics of how to create a responsive layout for your Flutter website. For this tutorial I assume that you've already got a Flutter web project properly set up. In case you haven't done that yet, check out my previous video covering all you need to know in order to set up your Flutter web project and also GitHub pages in case you're interested in deploying your website for free. Alright then, let's jump right into it. What we essentially have is two different views. A desktop view with a tab bar and different content and a mobile view with a hamburger menu. Depending on the size of the window, we switch from one view to the other. So let's start by implementing this structure. First, let's remove all the demo code and replace it with our own homepage widget. Create a new Dart file with a stateful widget, set it up properly and add it to our main.dart file. Next, let's add a layout builder widget to our scaffold. The layout builder widget will take care of handling what we want to show depending on the size of our window. So what we want to write here is if our maximum width is greater than 715 we show the desktop view. And if not we show the mobile view. Let's create the missing widget functions and we have got the basic structure done. Now if we take a look again at the structure of our website, we can see that for each tab item in the tab bar we have some content showing here. So these two things, tab item and content, are closely connected, which is why we want to have some class wrapping both together. This makes our code much cleaner, easier to read and easier to maintain. So I've already prepared a class over here, which is simply taking in two parameters, our tab, which is a custom tab, which we're going to create in a minute, and our content, which can be any widget we want. I've created the custom tab widget over here, so we have it separated from the content view class and can play around with the style and interaction later on if we want. For now, as you can see, it simply takes in a title as a string, which is then added as text to the tab widget. So with these two classes in place, let's head back to our homepage and create a list of what we want to be shown. In total, we want to have three items in this list. The first content view is representing our home tab with its content. The second one is the about page and the third one is the projects page. Since in this tutorial we are mainly focusing on the design of our tapper, I will just add some placeholder content to be displayed. Alright then, with that initial setup done, let's start working on the desktop view itself. We have got a column layout with two elements, our tapper and our content. After adding some alignment to the column, we will be adding, you guessed it right, a custom tab bar which we still need to create and our content. For our custom tab bar, we need to create a stateless widget which is taking in a tab controller and a list of tabs as parameters.
in our build method, let's add a container, which for now simply is as wide as a quarter of our screen. We can then add a tab bar widget, which we give the controller and tabs from above. Now let's go back to our homepage and properly add our custom tab bar. First, we need to create a tab controller and initialize it in our init state method. It takes in the length of our content view list and for vsync simply write this. Now to solve this error, add with single ticker provider state mixin to our class and then we can add the controller to our tab bar. Now we get our tabs from the previously created content view list. Remember, for each content view there is a tab and a content. Now to get a list of all the tabs of our content views, call contentViews.map. This allows us to iterate over all elements E in the list and select each tab. Add the to list ending to the method and we are done with our tab bar. Similar to the tab bar, we now need to access every content widget of our list. First, add a container, give it some random height for now and add a tab bar view as a child. Here, we will also call the map method of content views and this time access all content elements of our list. Our desktop view is now roughly implemented. As you can see, it still doesn't look that nice and it also isn't fully responsive. So let's fix that. First, let's give our tapper view a responsive size to prevent overflow. Add a screen height value here and give it a responsive value based on our current screen size in our build method. Then let's give our tapper view a height of let's say 85% of our current screen height. Let's also add some padding to the top and bottom of our page. For this let's add some values for top and bottom padding. In our build method we then calculate each value with a scaling factor and add it to the padding of our page. Next up is our tab bar. As you can see, we have some line breaks we want to avoid. So for this, we are rescaling the width of our tab bar depending on the size of our window. So let's introduce the screen width to our custom tab bar. Depending on the width, we now want to have a scaling value. So, if our screen width is greater than 1400, the value is 0.21. If it is between 1400 and 1100, it is 0.3. And everything smaller than that, it is 0.4. So, the smaller our screen width, 
the wider our tab bar becomes. If we now multiply the screen width with the scaling value, we won't have any line break affecting our tab titles. Since we are working on the tab bar at the moment, I'd like to change its style and interaction a bit. Let's wrap our tab bar with a theme, add some theme data and set the highlight color, the splash color and the hover color to transparent. Also let's add an indicator color and some padding. Of course, this is just a preference of my own. Please feel free to add any style you want here. But other than that, we are done with our desktop view. It's looking good and it's scaling properly depending on our window size. So let's continue with adding the mobile view as well. As we've seen in the beginning, we want to have a hamburger menu opening a drawer with our corresponding tab items. To begin with, we add a container which is as wide as the whole screen. Let's add a column and some alignment to it. Add a white icon button with a hamburger icon to it and an on-pressed method which we will leave empty for now. Now we also need to define the drawer that is opening up when we click on the hamburger icon. Create a custom widget function where we add a drawer widget whose child is going to be a list view with list tiles including the titles of each of our tabs. We are again working with the map method and add a to list in the end when we are done. So both our icon button and our drawer are prepared. To wrap it up, let's make them interact. Since our hamburger icon is currently aligned to the right of the screen, it looks better if the drawer also comes from the right. So we're adding a so-called end drawer instead of a normal drawer. The only difference is that the end drawer comes from the right and the normal drawer from the left. What we also need is a scaffold key, which we first need to define up here and then add it to our scaffold.
because now once we press the icon button, we can call the open end drawer method of the scaffold key, which is, as you might have guessed, opening the end drawer. Once we hit hot restart, you can see that everything is working fine. Although now we want to make some aesthetic adjustments to our mobile view as well. Let's add some side padding to our view and also adjust the size of our icon button depending on the screen size. At last, let's add an empty container to our drawer, so it looks a bit nicer once we open it up. Alright, so that's it for today, our fully responsive, nice looking top navigation bar in Flutter is done. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned a few neat tips and tricks here and there. Stay tuned for upcoming videos of my Flutter web tutorial series. I decided to upload one episode every Friday from now on to keep you guys updated on exciting content on Flutter web. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and if not, I wish you all a very nice day. 